Welcome to Valley Grove Baptist Church, located at 1731 South, U.S. Highway 281 in Stephenville, Texas. We are glad you joined us for our 1030 Sunday morning worship service. If you'd like to learn more about Valley Grove, please check us out at our website at valleygrove.net. Now, join us for the morning worship service already in progress. Excited uh, to share this video with you this morning. We're not there, as you can tell, and the reason we're not is because we are away for a secret lunch today. Uh, Mackenzie is being proposed to by her uh, boyfriend, Stephen Baker, and so we are down here to celebrate her saying yes today at lunch uh, and excited to do so. So thank you for the opportunity of getting away. But I'm also excited to have Emmanuel Jimenez there with you this morning. Manny and I served together in Sweetwater before we're coming here to Stephenville, and he went on to pastor at First Baptist Bront. Some of you may remember Manny from going uh, with us to El Salvador a couple of years ago. A dear brother, a great friend, he and Bethany and their beautiful family, so tickled to have them there uh, today. So you be in prayer for Manny. Uh, you love on him. He's going to bring a good word from uh, God's word today and excited about that. So just wanted to say hello and welcome. Be in prayer for us. God bless you. We'll see you again next week. Pray for uh, her and that is her away with their family during this time. And uh, I know that especially now, pray that she says yes. So <laughs> you know, in the midst of all that. Again, we're glad that uh, we're glad to have you get away and celebrate that with this family. And, uh, and I do want to let you know about uh, Richard Porter, who does play our drums uh, on a regular basis. I uh, was taken to the hospital yesterday. He had a uh, heart attack, and, but he's doing very well and had 95% blockage uh, in one of his arteries, but that's cleared out and they're uh, taking care of him. So just keep uh, Richard and his Debbie in your prayers during this time. 
okay? And let's just go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to bless that and think of us the remainder of our service. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for allowing us to be in your house today, God. What a privilege and an honor we have to be here in your presence. God, we just ask that your presence would be here in a mighty, mighty way. Speak to every heart. May those who are visiting with us feel welcome, God. I just pray that you be with Brother Emmanuel as he comes and brings the word. I just, uh, just be with every word that he speaks. God, we just again, as Brother Jerry has already said, if anyone here who does not know you as Lord and Savior, let today be the day of salvation. We just thank you that we have an opportunity to worship you among our brothers and sisters in Christ. We love you, Lord. We love each other. We just pray that your name will be glorified. Amen. We pray. Amen. Now, why don't you stand, turn around and want to know what else good to have in the house of the Lord today. You do that right
trust me. Where was Jesus? Was he on the shoreline when the storm hit? He was asleep, but where was he asleep? At home? He was on the boat with them, wasn't he? Did you know, guys, that Jesus is on your boat with you when sometimes storms happen? There might be a storm in your life, and you think, I'm all alone. My boat is going to sink, and I am all alone. But who's asleep at the bottom of your boat? Jesus. And he knows that there's a storm happening. And if you go to him and say, Jesus, I'm having a hard time. There's a storm, and I'm afraid. He will stand, and he will tell that storm to be still. <coughs> so, last night when the storm was scaring my dog, I was trying to tell them. So, if a storm happens again today, and you may wake up or your animals may get afraid, you can always remember that Jesus is there and he can calm any storm in your life, whether it be a thunderstorm outside or a storm in your heart, okay? Are you all pray with me? God, thank you so much for these children, God. Um, I just thank you for their parents who have brought them here faithfully. God, I thank you for doing to guide them and shape them and their parents. Lady of peace in their storm, God, even at a young age, that they can run to you for that. Um, and God, I just pray that um, you would remind them of that, that this would be a lesson every time they see thunder or hear. Um, God, that they would know that you were their peace. Uh, God, thank you for the rain. And thank you for these kids and their son. It's, uh, it's my my turn to do one of my least favorite things in youth ministry, um, and that's uh, senior recognition. We have been very blessed with uh, the, the guys and girls that we, we get to minister to here at Valley Grove, and anytime um, it's time for them to move on to that next stage of life, that next phase, it's, uh, it's, it's hard. It's hard for us to do. Um, Christina isn't here today. Um, but if she was, she would probably be hiding somewhere crying by now. So um, just we're just that attached to these uh, these guys and girls, and um, and I'm very excited to get to recognize them um, in front of you today. Um, just just because we are proud of them and, and, and know that you are too. Um, so I'm going to call them forward and as I do. They'll line up here at the front. Uh, Jason has a has a, um, a gift for. We have a gift that we're going to give each one. Um, I have a, a few things I'd like to share about each one. And uh, while I do that, there will also be um, some pictures um, on the screen. So the first one is Kylie Jo Everett. Uh, Kylie's parents are Kyle and Carrie. Um, Kylie graduates from Stephenville High School. Uh, after um, Kyle, Kyle says that it's in spite of, of him that he's, that, that he's doing this. Um, and, and, um, her plans for after high school were to attend Howard Payne University. Um, she's going to she's going to be a biology major. Um, her her hope is to become an occupational therapist. Um, some extra extracurricular activities Kylie was involved in at Stephenville High School. She was a part of the Thespian Honor Society, um, the DECA organization, the HOSA organization, varsity theater, and Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, Kylie is. A receiving the Heart of Texas scholar, um, Scholarship, and um, we also asked him to, to write a fond memory, um, and, and Kylie's fond memory, which she put, was Debbie Thompson has loved me so well and has been a huge encourager to me. She's helped me believe in myself, um, and I just think that's a beautiful testimony of, of what Valley Grove has done and the love that they've poured out, that you pour out on our students. Uh, next is Catherine Ann Nation, um, Bruce and Annette Nation, her, her parents. Um, she will also graduate from Steubenville High School. Her plans are to attend Tarleton State University and be a nursing major. Um, let's see here. Uh, her extracurricular activities at volleyball, varsity cheerleader, National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society. Um, she received the Rotary Club Student of the Month and Texas Scholars Scholarships um, Awards. Um, and a fond memory, uh, and I didn't prompt any of, any of these. Uh, so it's a big thanks to Jeremy and Christina for all they've done um, for us over the years. 
Uh, thanks for putting up with me and making my time to the youth group unforgettable. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I, I <can't. laughs> Next we have um, we have Shayla Kate Perry. And as Shayla Kate comes forward. Her parents are, are Eva Perry and the late Greg Perry, and her sister Sam. Um, she also attended Stephenville High School. Um, her plans for next year to volunteer at the pet store and also work at Mills on Mills, work from work delivering meals with Mills on Mills. Um, she, she, her future plans, um, she wants to record a song in the studio to go skydiving, to learn how to play tennis, and learn how to cook fried chicken. I bet there's somebody here that can help her with those things. Um, her extracurricular activities, she um, for choir, she did a Division I solo at UL, UIL singing at a lullaby in German. Uh, she was an all-star leading baseball and soccer, assistant to music therapist at Dublin ISD on Fridays, aide at Central. She created slideshows, sing, and read, read to the class while she did that. Uh, and this year in the Special Olympics, uh, Shayla placed first place in the long jump. In, in her fond memories of Valley Road is delivering Christmas cards to the older people and making them smile, Christmas caroling with Brother Ward and Jenna, delivering Thanksgiving meals, going to the carnivals and getting her face painted, going on the occasional hay ride, doing the cake walk and drinking hot apple cider. She loves going to Valley Grove and attending Sunday school her Sunday, her Friday Sunday school class. Next we have Kylie Renee. Kylie's parents are Pat and Michelle Ponder. Um, she's also graduated from Stephenville High School. Uh, her plans for next year, she's going to attend Tarleton State University and run um, track and field at, um, at Tarleton. Uh, she, she, her anticipated major is um, biomedical science. And after graduating from Tarleton, she plans to go to Weatherford College to study sonography. Um, her extra track. Man, I say that wrong every time. <laughs> Curricular activities, I want to add those words together. Varsity ball, volleyball, cheerleader, um, varsity track. She's the vice president of EPIC, which is encouraging people in the community. Um, she received the Honeybee Heart, Heart Award and MVP in track, and also newcomer of the year in volleyball. Uh, her favorite memory is, uh, is, is going to church camp every year and making new friends along the way. Finally, we have Derek Werner. I have to say a special thing about Derek. Um, the Werner family is new to Valley Grove and, and loved so much getting to know Derek over the last couple of months and uh, excited to get to continue getting to know Derek. Uh, his parents are Lauren and Chris Werner. Uh, Derek was homeschooled. Um, his plans are to attend college and go to work next year. He wants to major in kinesiology and to get his degree to be a personal trainer. His, his extracurricular pan, I did it again. <laughs> Curricular activities, church, work, um, work in the business he created, and um, he loves to, to play sports. Um, Derek being new, one of his memories is um, is uh, the lock in that we had, and then um, he said he's, he's beyond blessed that my family found Valley Grove um, because there's no other youth group like this one. Um, I am so blessed, church, to get to know these and um, the others that, that weren't able to be here today. Um, we're very blessed. Um, we're, we have a, a great legacy that the church is passing on through these, these students, and I know that the investment that you've made in them uh, will return to the fold. Uh, let's, I'm going to pray over them, and then they can return to their seats. Father God, thank you so much for the, these, these guys and girls that are here, Father. Thank you so much for um, the lives that you've invested in, Father pray that we as a church would be able to continue um, to, to be there for them, Father, to love them, um, God, just to watch them as they grow into to young adults, Father, as they grow into adults, and, and, and to see, Father, how you're going to use them to further your kingdom, because I know, God, I know that you have great things in store for them. God, we are so blessed to get to watch them. Thank you for the time that we've had with them in the youth ministry. Father, for the future they have in the college ministry and, and beyond, Lord, we just love you and we thank you so much for who you are and what you're doing. We pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.
King of kings and Lord of lords. And how great is our God. That's what we'll sing the Lord Jesus face to face one day. Amen. Let's sing again this song. The splendor of
name is Emmanuel Jimenez, and as you heard, I served uh, with Pastor Ward in Sweetwater. Uh, I was his youth pastor, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited and honored uh, to get to be with y'all this morning, and uh, I'm honored to know Pastor Ward. He's one of my uh, most favorite people on the planet, and it's just such a privilege to, to know him and a, and a blessing. Well, uh, I'm from Bangs, Texas, and if you ever get a chance to go there, don't. Uh, don't go there, you'll only find boredom. All right, that's all there is in Bangs. No, uh, just kidding, it's a, it's a great place. Well, hey, this morning, uh, we're going to uh, be in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. So if you have your Bible, turn there with me. The title of our sermon is The Importance of Relationships. And so let me read that passage with you. It's Acts chapter 2, verses 42 uh, through 47. Here's what it says. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings, distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. Hey, let's pray together. Father God, creator of all things, Lord, thank you uh, for this day. God, thank you, Lord, for the worship, Lord, that we've experienced today. God, I pray that we'll continue that worship as we jump into your word. Uh, Father God, I pray, Lord, that I would decrease and you would increase in me, Lord. No one here needs to hear from me, Lord, but every one of us needs to hear from you. So, Father, I pray that you would speak through your word and speak through this sermon. And God, help us to become more like you so that we can be used by you for your glory. And it's in Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Well, as we begin, let's define two words. Uh, the first word is relationship, and the second word is community. All right? A uh, relationship is a connection between two or more people. And community is a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. Now, if any place on the planet, if any place, if any organization, if any group of people on the planet should have a connection between its members, if any place on the planet uh, should have a unity uh, uh, and be experiencing community and have an atmosphere of community, it should be the church, amen? The church is God's family, right? And we should be a place with strong relationships. We, be, we should be a place uh, of strong uh, connection. One author points out that our culture craves community, and yet we live in isolation. He talks about how this used to not be the case. He talks about how houses used to be the design uh, for us to experience community. Houses used to always have a huge front porch on the front. And families would be hanging out at their front porch. And neighbors would come by. And they would see the family on the front porch. And they would stop by and chit-chat. And there was a connection uh, through our neighborhoods and our communities and all our streets. But now, that's no longer the case. Today, many architects, today many architects design houses, they don't design them for community anymore, they design them for privacy. Right? The front porch has been replaced with the backyard and tall privacy fences. Right? Many houses are no longer designed for connecting with others, they're designed for privacy. And if people are hanging out outside of a family, is hanging out outside, they're no longer on the front porch, but they're in the backyard behind a privacy fence. And I want you all to listen to this conclusion from George Gallup on, on one of his studies he did in America. Listen to how he concludes his study. He says, Americans are among the loneliest people in the world. Well, I'll think about that. I'll, I'll read it again. Americans are among the loneliest people in the world. Now, isn't that crazy? Right? Whenever I hear that, I say to myself, how is that possible? Right? We drive on highways full of people. Right? We work in places full of people. Right? We go to school in places full of people. We go shopping in stores full of people. We eat at restaurants full of people. We text people all the time and we're on Facebook with tons of friends. Right? And yet, we are lonely. And that's interesting. 
and that's sad. And so, here's the deal. Doing life isolated and alone and unconnected is not how God designed for us to be loved. And I believe that God has created us and wired us for community and to experience deep, growing relationships. I believe Scripture teaches us over again. And, and, and so, that's actually uh, my first point. So, if you're taking notes, number one, God has created you for relationship. Now, the first relationship that God's created us for is our relationship with God, right? We just need to go uh, to the very first book in the Bible, right? In Genesis 1 and 2, we read the creation account and how God planned for us to be one, right? And five times God speaks and He creates our uh, children's sermon. Uh, this morning was about the power of God's Word. Jesus speaks to a, to a, a strong storm and, it, and, and He speaks peace to it and there's peace. Right? He speaks to these huge crashing waves and they cease. Well, we can see the power of God's Word in Genesis. Right, God speaks and He creates. And I just want to camp out here for one moment. I want us to really think about that. Our God is powerful and He's amazing. These verses are so cool that talk about God's creation because how mighty and how powerful is our God that He can speak and create things. Right, Five times He speaks and He creates. Right, God exhales. And out comes this huge stars, right? God exhales and out comes planets. God exhales and out comes galaxies. God exhales and out comes the universe. Man, our God is so powerful, He breathes out stars. Man, I want you to know our God is amazing and He's powerful and He's wonderful and He's created. And so how amazing is our God? Now, what's interesting about the Genesis passage is the sixth time that God speaks, or the sixth time that God creates, he creates differently, doesn't He? Right? Uh, the sixth time uh, that God creates, He creates man, and He says that it is very good. Right? Genesis 2, 7 says, God formed man from the dust of the ground, and He breathed into His nostrils the breath of life. Now, uh, I'm a visual person. I'm a visual learner. And whenever I read that passage, uh, it makes me think of the beach. Now, I have experience uh, building sandcastles, right? Uh, especially as a little kid. And, and the way that you build a sandcastle uh, is, first of all, you got to stoop. First of all, you got to get down. And you got to get some dirt together, right? But dirt alone won't work, right? You got to get down. You got to get dirt together. But now you got to make mud. You got to get some water. You got to get your hands dirty. And now the sand is able to be formed. In this passage, when I read it, I visualize our, our mighty, awesome, powerful God who can breathe out stars. He's also humble and He stoops and He gets out on one knee and He forms us with His hands, making mud. He gets His hands dirty. And then the Scripture says something beautiful. That mighty, awesome God, not only does He get down and He stoops, but uh, I visualize CPR. He gets down and He puts His powerful, holy lips against ours. And He breathes life into us. Man, if you get nothing else from this message, I want you to know that God loves you. And God cares about you. Man, God took time to make you. Why did He do that? Because He cares about you and He loves you. If you get nothing out from Scripture, if, if you get an opportunity to share something to someone about God, if they're a, a Buddhist or if they're a Hindu, if they're uh, living some crazy lifestyle, if you get an opportunity to teach them something about God or share something with uh, to them about God, let them know that God made them and God loves them. And I don't care who you are, I don't care what you've done, God loves you and He made you for a purpose. If we get nothing else out of uh, what we're learning today, I hope that you know that God dearly loves you. He put His lips against yours to breathe life into you. And uh, I hope uh, that makes you feel valued. And I hope that affects the way you treat other people. Regardless of another person's religion, regardless of another person's sin, regardless of another person's lifestyle, God got down and He stooped and He humbled Himself to form them and He put His lips against theirs and He breathed life into them. They are an image bearer of God and they deserve to be treated with respect. And if someone's going to love them and respect them, it should be God's people, the church. Amen? Amen. Hey, it doesn't matter who the person is or what their sin is, God wants you to love them. Church, Valley Grove, let's be uh, God's hands and feet and let's love people. So God created us and wired us for relationship. Uh, first and foremost, He created us for relationship with Himself. 
We were created for relationship with God. And number two, we were created for relationship with others. Something unexpected happens in the Genesis account. God speaks and He creates and He calls it good. And he does that five times. He speaks, He creates, and He calls it good. And then God creates man and it's very good. And then something unexpected happens. We find out that it's not all good. Right? The scripture goes on to say that it is not good for man to be alone. God's relationships are so important that it's not good for us to be alone. Right before sin entered the world, before man fell and sinned, there was something that wasn't good, and that was that he was alone. Guys, I want y'all to think about this and what it says about the importance of relationships. I want y'all to listen to what one pastor actually says about this verse. Genesis 2.8. Genesis 2.8 tells us, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. One pastor says, For many years, many of us have heard this passage quoted in the context of marriage, and rightly so. But I believe the implications go beyond an affirmation of the marriage relationship. At its core, this is a statement about the importance of connecting well with others. The marriage relationship being the most profound illustration of that reality. So if you're taking notes, number one, we were created for relationships. Number two, God wants His people to connect well with each other. Now, listen to these scriptures that talk about connecting well with each other. Uh, Galatians 6.2 says, Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. John 13.35 says, By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. John 17. In John 17, we get one of Jesus' longest prayers. And I want to read a portion of that to you. It's interesting. I want to encourage you to go to John sometime, read chapter 17, and see what are the things that Jesus prayed about. And He recorded in the Bible for us. Here's a small portion of it. John 17, 20 through 23. It says, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that, uh, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. And I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I am them and you and me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. These verses tell us that God wants His people to connect well together, right? Uh, God wants uh, His people to be united in community and have deep, meaningful relationships. So, um, here's the deal. If God wants us to connect well with each other, then it's important for us to, to know a, a principle. And some churches have, have gotten a hold of this principle and, and they are striving to do this principle well. Uh, and the churches that are really doing this principle well, man, they're really focusing on it, they're really promoting it, and, and many of them are flourishing and they're growing and they're having great impact on their community and, and, and they're reaching uh, the unchurched. And so uh, I want to share this principle with y'all because if God really wants us to connect well, then we need to take this principle seriously. Here's the principle. Relationships happen in small groups. Everybody say relationships. Everybody say small groups. Relationships happen in small groups. Now here's the deal. Let's test that real quick. Do relationships really happen in small groups? Alright, let's test that real quick. Uh, your immediate family. Yeah, that's a small group. Right? Best friends. Yeah, that's a small group. Marriage. That better be a small group. Amen. Uh, that needs to be a small group. Right? Uh, the smallest of all groups, few people. Uh, here's the deal. Life happens in small groups. Now, uh, we read one of the verses, and one of the verses was bear one another's burdens. How can I bear someone's burdens if I don't even know what they are? Can you bear someone's burdens if you don't know what they are? And here's the deal. Most people, they're not going to share you with you their deepest, darkest burden until you've developed a relationship with them. Amen? Guys, relationships are so important. If we're going to bear one another's burdens, we've got to get to know each other. We've got to spend time in small groups uh, with each other. And uh, how can we bear someone's burdens if we don't even know their name and we don't know their story we don't know what's going on in their life? Now, in the Bible, there's these things called 52 
There's 52 one another's. All right? There's 52 times in the Bible where it says something like love one another, encourage one another, bear one another's burdens. All right? 52 times the Bible uses the phrase one another, and it's telling God's people to do it. And the only way that we can do the one another's is in small groups. All right? Uh, worship's important. I hope we continue to come to worship. Uh, the reason that we have worship is so that we can together uh, worship God and magnify Him and connect with Him and see what His Word tells us. Worship is so important. I'm so glad you all chose to come to worship. But if we're going to do the one another's, man, we've got to be a part of small groups. And so maybe you're here today and God's telling you, man, I need to take small groups seriously. Maybe you're here and you're not a part of a small group. I want to encourage you to join a small group. Maybe God's leading you to do that. Maybe you're here and, and you're like, man, I want to help our church to grow. I want to help our church to be effective. Man, I want to do the one another's and I want our church to do the one another's. And so maybe God's leading you. Maybe you need to call Pastor Ward or actually don't call him uh, right today. Uh, but maybe come see him uh, next week. Call him next week and say, hey, Pastor Ward, uh, man, I want to take small groups seriously. I want to help our church. Man, how can I help us do small groups well? Man, do you want me to be a substitute teacher? Uh, whenever one of our, 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 our small group leaders is out, uh, do you want me to, do you want to start a small group? Do, we need, do I need to do that? Do you, maybe you're a part of a small group and maybe you need to go to your uh, small group leader and say, hey man, how can I help you? Do you want me to call people and check on them? Do you want me to send encouraging notes when someone visits our small group or our church? Uh, maybe you, you want to use my house and we can have uh, an ice cream fellowship or uh, we can have a game night and we can invite lost people. Uh, one church people, D church people, people uh, who are interested, who, who might be interested in joining Valley Road. Maybe they're too intimidated to come to the church. Uh, maybe they'll come to a small group at my house. And maybe they don't like church, but they like ice cream. And they can see that Christians aren't weird and they have fun. And then from there, maybe they'll join our small group. Maybe they'll come visit our church. And then after visiting our church, maybe they'll get plugged in the Bible study and start coming every week and get to know people. And maybe you need to go to Pastor Ward and say, Pastor Ward, I'm how can I serve? How can I help bear the one another's uh, that are found in Scripture? So, uh, number one, God's required us for relationship. Number two, uh, uh, God wants us to connect well with each other. Relationships happen in small groups. And number three, the early church modeled relationships for us. And that's our passage, Acts chapter 2, 42 through 47. That Scripture tells us that they met daily in the temple courts. You know what that is? When they met daily in the temple courts, they were worshiping together. They were having big groups. Like we're doing right now. But then what else does it say? They didn't only meet together in large groups. It says that they broke bread in each other's homes. What's that called? That's called small groups. They would go visit people. Man, they would go visit the unchurched and the de church and the lost. And they would get to know what their burdens were. Oh man, I don't have enough food. Hey, here's some of my own bread. Oh man, the church is running low on bread to share with people. Uh, the church is running low on funds so that we can minister to people. You know what? I got more than I need. I'm going to sell some of my stuff. And they sold some of their stuff so that they could have more money to go and do ministry. They were going house to house. They were uh, getting to know each other. They were taking relationships seriously. Acts chapter 5 verse 42 says this. It says, day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is Christ. You know what? Um, if someone doesn't know Christ or someone uh, is, doesn't completely understand the gospel or they're not sure about Jesus and they're not sure about the church and they're not sure uh, uh, about, about whether God exists, inviting them to church is a great first step for them. Another great first step is to say, uh, hey man, I want to invite you to Bible study. Man, I want to invite you to, to, to small group. All right, that's what they were doing here. They were proclaiming the gospel in the big group. And, and y'all need to continue to do that. I know Pastor Ward. Uh, I know uh, he proclaims the gospel. Uh, number two, man, maybe someone is too intimidated to come to church, but maybe they'll come to your house for dinner. And maybe as y'all build that relationship, God will open a door for them to say, hey, man, why are you Christian? Or, uh, man, what's the gospel about? Or, or tell me about God. And that's your open door to share the gospel with them. See, the early church was doing that. They weren't just uh, proclaiming the gospel in corporate worship. They were doing it house to house. That means the preacher wasn't the only evangelist in the church. That means the preacher wasn't the only one sharing the gospel. The early church was booming and it was growing. They were doing ministry not just on Sunday and Lord's Day. Uh, they were going house to house throughout the week. And how does God want you to apply what you're hearing today? 
See, the early church took relationships seriously. Relationships were important to the early church. Man, they worshiped together. And they went house to house. And so, uh, number three is uh, the early church model relationships for us. Number four, and our final point, relationships are important to Jesus. According to Jesus, He said the whole Bible can be summed up in two things. And I'm sure many of you know what that is. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and strength. And the second thing is love your neighbor as yourself. What if when Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself, what if He wanted us to take it literally? What if, whenever Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself, what if the early church took it literally, and so they started at their house, and they started going to their neighbors, and they started going house to house to love their literal neighbor? And what if God put you on your street, and on your block, and in your neighborhood, and in Stephenville, so that you would love the neighbors around you? What if God put you in your workplace because He knew that your cubicle would be next to a dude's cubicle who didn't know the Lord? What if God put you in your school and gave you that locker because a person whose locker is above you and next to you doesn't know the Lord and God said, I want her to have that locker. I want him to have that locker because they know me and they know the gospel and they'll share it with those around them. What if God literally wanted us to love our neighbor and to share the gospel with those we drive by every single day? What if He literally meant our next door neighbor? Or the house across the street. Or the house is next to us. Or maybe you live in a farm. You're like, man, no, this doesn't apply to me. I, I have a farm with hundreds of acres. Well, guess what? There's a property line. And on the other side of that fence, there's someone else's property. Maybe God put you there because if anyone's going to reach that person in the next hundred acres, it's you. Guys, I think God literally wants us to love our neighbors. He literally wants us to take that uh, literally, he wants us to take it serious. I want you to listen uh, to uh, John, uh, what John says in John chapter 1 about Jesus. He says, In the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was uh, God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. I think the Message Bible is a great tool to help uh, Christ followers and help people understand the Bible. And I want you all to hear how the Message puts verse 14. Here's what it says. The Word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. I think that's a great way of putting how Jesus came to earth. He came, He became flesh and blood, and He moved into the neighborhood. Now, there's a big theological word to describe God becoming flesh and God moving into the neighborhood, neighborhood and God uh, coming to earth. And that word is a word incarnational. When Jesus moved into the neighborhood, people began to follow Him. He began to teach them. People were able to have a relationship with Him and get close to Him. They discovered that there was something very special about Jesus. He's not a normal dude. He's not just a regular person. Jesus is God living in the flesh and living on our street. They got to look into the face of God when they looked into the face of Jesus. The creator of the universe became man and moved into the neighborhood. Man, I want you to think about that. Jesus is known as Jesus of Nazareth. Why? Because God didn't just come to earth. Jesus didn't just come to earth. He came to a specific town. Jesus lived in a specific house. Jesus had a zip code and an address. Jesus lived on a particular street. Right? And here's the deal. Uh, Jesus wants us to be incarnational just like He was. Jesus wants us to take relationships seriously and connecting with people seriously. And He modeled it for us. He calls us to be incarnational. Jesus didn't go to one place twice a week and say, hey, come see me. Is that what Jesus did? Is that how Jesus did ministry? Hey, I'm going to be at so-and-so location on Sundays and Wednesdays. Y'all come see me. No, Jesus went to them. Jesus stayed in a house with someone and he, from there, went out and met people. But that's how God wants us to do ministry. Jesus took relationships seriously. 
Now, I want you all to take relationships seriously uh, because I believe the Bible teaches us to, because the early church did, because Jesus did, but also it's good for your health. I want you to listen to this research already. There's a book. In the book, everybody's normal until you get to know them. The author says, researchers found that the most isolated people were three times more likely to die than those with strong relational connections. People who had bad health habits such as smoking, poor eating, obesity, etc., but strong social ties lived significantly longer than people who had great health habits but were isolated. So in other words, it's better to eat Twinkies with good friends than to eat broccoli alone. <laughs> Everyone's like, yeah, no broccoli. Well, here's the deal. Acts chapter 17, 26 through 27 tells us, From one man he made every nation of men, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the time set for them, the exact places where they should live. God did this so that man would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. Guys, I want you all to know that you don't live where you live by accident. Guys, you don't live in the house you live in because you like the yard or because you like the floor plan or because you love the kitchen appliances. You don't live where you live by accident. You live where you live because God wanted you to live there. Because God wants you to be an incarnational missionary. God's called you to be His witness. God's called you to take relationships seriously. God's called you to love on your literal neighbors. Right? So we need to rediscover incarnational missions. And we need to really begin to love where we live like Christ wanted us to be. Now this passage ends with a statement. It says, He is not far from each one of us. And I want you all to think, how is God not far from each one of us? Well, for one, the Spirit of God is at work in each of our lives. And uh, He's either calling us to go deeper into the Gospel or to repent and receive the grace of God. Right? For the first time. Another way that God is close to each one of us is because God has put His children on this planet. Because God, through the Holy Spirit, lives inside of His children. And He's put us in strategic locations at work and at school, on sports teams, right? In different streets and neighborhoods. That's another way that God is close to each one of us because He's put His people around us. And so as we close, uh, Pastor Rob's going to come and he's going to get ready for the invitation time. I want to leave you with four action steps to deepen community and relationships. Number one, set up an appointment with someone who sharpens you and fills you. It can be over coffee or it can be over lunch. But I want to encourage you to deepen a relationship with someone who pours into you. Someone who helps you to come on my cross. Number two, I want you to ask the Lord for a person that He wants you to minister to. Who's someone that God wants you to connect or reconnect with so that you can encourage them and disciple them and pour into them? Number three, if you're not a part of a small group, I want to encourage you to join a small group. And I want to encourage you uh, to maybe invite someone to go to that small group with you. Now, here's the deal. A lot of churches have really cool names for small groups, right? They call them uh, life groups, cell groups, home groups, core groups, Bible fellowships. But most Baptist churches have a really cool name for it. It's called Sunday School, right? Or Bible study. And so if you're not a part of a small group, I encourage you to, to join them. Number four, I want to encourage you to build a new growing relationship with someone. And a great place for you to start is with your neighbor to your left and your neighbor to your right and your neighbor across the street your neighbor behind you. I want to encourage you to build a growing relationship with someone new. And here's the deal. Relationships have a natural progression. Relationships usually start with a wave. Right? You wave at someone for the first time. After a few times of waving at them, you learn their name. And so you move from waving and you start saying, hey, Mike, good to see you, man. So you do the wave in the name, right? And then uh, it progresses from, hey, Mike, to, hey, Mike, how you doing, man? And then after a while, it'll progress from, hey, Mike, how are you doing, to, hey, Mike, there's something in my garage. Can I get you to come help me do that? And you invite them in your life, and you ask them to help you with something. Right? Then you move from them helping you with something for a quick second. You move from that to, hey, Mike, man, I heard your mom's in the hospital. Or, hey, Mike, I saw that your son moved back into the house, man. How's that going? Hey, Mike, I... Uh, Man, how can I help you, uh, uh, you know, with that, with that thing that you're dealing with? Man, how can I serve you? And that's how relationships progress. 
See, doing life isolated and all alone and unconnected is not how God designed for us to do lives. So, uh, God wired us and created us for a relationship first with God and then with others. Well, here's the deal. Y'all have all been excellent listeners this morning. But James, the, the book of James tells us to not just be a hearer of the Word, but to be a doer of the Word. And so, I wouldn't feel right letting y'all leave this place without giving y'all an opportunity to respond to what you've heard. And so, i got to ask you, what is it that God might be leading you to do this morning? What decision might He be leading you to make? Maybe you're here, and you've been visiting Valley Grove for a while, and you're discovering what a great church it is, and uh, it's got an awesome pastor and staff, and God's leading you to join this church. Man, if that's you, here in a moment, I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to ask everyone to stand, and if God's leading you to join this church, I invite you to come. All right? Maybe you're here, and you know Jesus, you give your life to Jesus, but there's never been a time when you've been baptized. So I want you to know the first thing that God asks us to do when we become a Christian is to be baptized. So if you're here and you've never been baptized, uh, I want to invite you to come. Here in a moment, when everyone stands, man, that's your cue to come if God's leading you to make a decision. Maybe you just need to come up here to the altar and God's laid something on your heart that you need to pray about. Maybe there's a lost co-worker, uh, an unchurched co-worker, uh, an unchurched family member. Someone that, that you're not sure if they know the gospel or not. And God's laying them on your heart. And you need to come up to the altar and pray for them. If that's you, I invite you to come do that during this invitation time. Maybe you're here and something's going on in your life. And you're like, man, I would love uh, for Pastor Manny to pray for me. Man, I would be honored and I would love to pray with you. If God's leading you to come, uh, I, would, I would love to be a part of that. Maybe you're here and there's never been a time and you remember past. Where you saw that you were a sinner and you were saved. Man, I'll, I want you to know that everybody spends eternity somewhere. And I want you to know that Jesus loves you so much that He went to the cross so that you could spend eternity with Him forever. You see, because of our sin, that the anger of God is coming towards us. It's coming towards us like a bullet, right? Uh, God has to punish sin. But Jesus, out of His great love for us, it's like He dove in front of that bullet and He took it for us. We deserve the death penalty for our sins. Jesus took the death penalty for us. That's what the cross is all about. That's really good news. Because Jesus paid the penalty for our sin, now we can have a relationship with God and we can spend eternity with Him. If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, if you're here and you've never chosen to follow Him, here in a moment, I invite you to come and I would love to pray for you as you make that decision for the first time. Alright, if God's leading you to make a decision, if He's leading you to be a part of small groups, if He's leading you uh, to, to begin doing the one another's and take relationships seriously. Maybe you're here and you need to commit to being an incarnational missionary. You know what? I'm going to quit avoiding my neighbors and I'm going to start loving them. I'm going to start the progression of the relationship with them. Maybe you need to come to the altar and pray about that. Maybe you'd like for me to pray with you. However God is leading you to do business with you this morning, let's do that during this